What is the elephant in the room that your fandom refuses to address? To phrase the title question more elaborately, what's that one character, relationship, event, arc, installment, writing choice, etc. that a majority of the fandom pretends not to perceive, even if they really should? As a bonus question, do you wish people would actually acknowledge it? Or do you also think it's best to ignore it? Credit to Reddit user the Reddit Girl 15 for starting this thread on the fanfiction subreddit. And let's go read some answers. But first, potential spoiler warning for a variety of fandoms. Steven Universe is about family relationships. There's not going to be some big epic battle because the show isn't like that. The amount of grown adults and teenagers who couldn't grasp the core concepts of a show made for 7 to 12 year olds is staggering. That in Civil War, Captain America fought for independence from the government, while Iron Man fought for government intervention. That during World War II, Cap went against orders to save his comrades. But in the fandom, Cap is a stickler for rules. Drives me nuts. In Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Yes, Annabeth had a crush on Luke and vice versa. No ifs, ends, or buts about it. But every time that's mentioned on the Percy Jackson subreddit, you're swarmed by people who go, He meant it like a sibling! Honestly, I think it's just denial on their part that Uncle Rick could ever write anything gross. I cannot stand the vast majority of Percy Jackson fans, and their incessant need to make the series the most pure and unproblematic paragon of children's fiction is basically 100% of the reason why. Like, this is all based on Greek mythology, and we all know about their wacky, incestuous shenanigans. In Naruto, the graduation numbers make zero sense. How will you ever get enough shinobi for a war if you have nine people who graduate every year? If you want things to make sense, you need a pretty thorough overhaul of how the system works. This gets quite literal in the Beastars fandom. How did that elephant get in the room through those normal, people-sized doors? This is particularly interesting since smaller animals get their own small-sized doors. I'm gonna make some people angry, but in Avatar The Last Airbender, Aang was an abusive partner and father who destroyed Katara's life. She ended up living alone, being a homebody, with strained relationships with her children because of him. He was a deadbeat dad who neglected two of his three kids in favor of his golden airbender child. The comics especially shine a light on this. In one scene, Katara is slumped against a wall, hugging her knees while Aang parties with his fangirls who blatantly flirt with him in front of her, and he ignores her pleas to be treated with respect. In the end, she is forced to apologize to him for being jealous. It's a really unhealthy relationship, and Katara deserved better. After she busted her ass to become a waterbending master, she ended up as a stay-at-home mother and wasn't involved in any further events. He drained out all of her ambition and vitality and did nothing to support her or make her happy. The most popular racebend headcanons in the Batman fandom are completely based in racist stereotypes. Similarly, the fanon characterizations for Cassandra Cain and Damian Wayne also reek of the demure East Asian and violent Middle Eastern stereotypes. To be fair, in canon, Damian Wayne is both extremely violent and half Middle Eastern. That's not fan and characterizations, that's just how they are in the comics. In fact, they're written even worse in the comics. Goku has, in fact, killed quite a few people and has never seemed to feel bad about it. Z Goku only killed two. OG and GT Goku left a trail of blood wherever he went. GT Goku is actually my favorite for this reason. He's a beast and does so much violence. Like, yes, do the violence, maim, murder. Baku Deku shippers, when they follow canon of him telling Izuku to jump from the roof and bullying him before and after. Like, I'm guilty of loving Bakugo regardless, but come on. A lot of the fandom stuff around Bakugo is frustrating. Like, people try and make the case that his mother is abusive. She isn't, by the way. And I fully believe part of it is them trying to make him more of a victim, to excuse his harsher bullying moments. Mental health issues. Not that they ignore them, but that they over-exaggerated just how bad they are. I like exploring characters' trauma, especially if a show, manga, book, movie can't or won't for whatever reason. 
but acting like a certain character has anxiety or panic attacks every 30 minutes at a slight trigger gets ridiculous, especially if they have begun healing from their trauma and certain triggers don't bother or affect them anymore. It's also annoying when a character is canonically not traumatized by an event, but had trauma in a fanfic. It's even worse when the canon source material explained why a character doesn't have trauma around the event. Relating to a character with similar struggles as you is fine, but don't make them more traumatized than they are. Not sure if it counts, but in the Mass Effect universe, practically everyone has a translator implant, which are capable of easily translating a lot of languages, even alien ones, like it was nothing. But there's still a lot of gratuitous Spanish and other common languages happening in fix between humans, even at a point in one of the games, which doesn't make sense. In Ace Attorney, nobody likes to acknowledge the hints of a relationship between Iris and Phoenix, Cause forget that, everyone ships Narumitsu, even some of the official developers. The characters aren't nearly as gay as they think they are. Those K-pop boys aren't really dating. And if they are, we probably wouldn't know. We don't talk about how in canon, the main character of our fix has less than 10 minutes of screen time total. We all pretend we do not see. Just a few minutes and a couple of lines? What do you mean? Surely this 400,000 word fanfic must be closer to the truth. The entire IT fandom just collectively pretends Eddie didn't die, and I find it so charming. There are quite a few fix-it fix, of course, but probably more fix just ignore it altogether, and I love it. In the Call of Duty fandom, the infantilization of Koenig in COD because he canonically has social anxiety. They treat him as this timid, giant teddy bear that's always stuttering or just really nervous. Y'all, this is a 6'10 beast that delights in his job, which, in simple terms, is killing people. The man is not a big baby, and social anxiety doesn't turn you into a stuttering buffoon like they make it seem in a lot of fix. Yes, he would probably be a gentle giant, but he would act more like a wallflower that watches people do stuff and kinda just stays quiet. But I have noticed this in other fandoms too, mainly with characters who are really big or if they have anxiety in any ways. It is totally possible to write Demetrius as having a strange relationship with his stepson Sebastian without making the only obvious man of color in Stardew Valley into an extremely abusive parent and or abusive partner to Robin. People that think that haven't actually searched around their house, have they? Demetrius literally has a self-help book about how to be a good stepfather. The man's just kind of thick-headed and very focused on his work. And yeah, he probably likes his daughter more because she likes science too. But it's more complicated than Demetrius is abusive, herder. In Bungo Stray Dogs, does I high-key, low-key, sorta most definitely abuse Dakutagawa in the name of training? That ain't tough love or whatever does I stands like to call it. He messed up Akutagawa even more than he already was, to be honest. That seems like a common trope in a lot of Japanese media for some reason. The mentor character is often the most horrible possible person, cruel and abusive and unreasonable. Then at the end, when the character has learned how to do the thing, suddenly they're thanking the mentor and thinking of them fondly? I don't get it. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Supernatural had one spin-off, The Winchesters, which was a prequel to the story. They had one backdoor pilot for another possible spin-off, Wayward Sisters, that ultimately wasn't picked up. And that's it. There never was another attempted spin-off. And there definitely wasn't an anime version of the show. I'm sorry, an anime version? We don't talk about it. It was awful. Star Wars was never actually good. It was a silly, fun, Flash Gordon throwback that pioneered the used future aesthetic and just so happened to have a few actually talented people working with and for Lucas. The moment you try to take it seriously as a work of speculative fiction, it falls to pieces. The moment they tried to take it seriously, it fell to pieces. That you have every right to stand evil characters, but please don't defend them for the evil things they did. The Haikyuu fandom generally refuses to acknowledge that Inarizaki High School is a private school, because the character's dialect is often translated into an informal, stereotypically American Southern dialect, 
and they don't want to admit their bias in thinking that that dialect means that the characters are poor or lower income. So they write them as poor, despite the school having dorms and money for a huge band. They also tend to write the one black character, Alan Ojiro, as huge or hulking over other people. Despite the fact that he's like six foot or six foot one, which is average in that series. In Hell of a Boss, Stolas being a low effort parent, and the show wants Octavia, the daughter, to be okay with neglect and always being put aside for his trysts. The fandom always likes to excuse it with, he's a tortured gay and he loves her, but it hits a sensitive spot with parents that try but fail badly emotionally. I'll just hint at it, the thought isn't enough. This is a little specific, but I'm in the Dramayani ship fandom, and a lot of people in there refuse to talk about how a good portion of the fanfics are messed up in not a good way. Draco basically assaulting Hermione and framing it in a, oh, he's just possessive lighting, doesn't make it less horrible, or in any way romantic. It's assault. I don't know if this is the kind of answer you were looking for, but in the Law & Order SVU fandom, it's the fact that Liv, the main character, is kind of a really bad cop. Like, there are several times throughout the show where she could have gotten fired or arrested for doing wildly illegal things for no reason, and the fandom likes to kinda ignore it and pretend she's perfect. The realization hit me only recently, but I realized that many of the cute, cheerful, funny characters in Tensura are mass murderers with no remorse. And it's like nobody even realizes it. Haha, <laughs> funny tsundere dragon. He an otaku. I agree. He is also a... drumroll please. Monster who caused disasters and murdered hundreds of thousands of innocent people, if not millions. Because he was bored. I still love him with everything I have, but it sort of hit me and was quite a big shock to acknowledge. No character in Fire Emblem Three Houses is objectively right on a moral spectrum or a perfect little angel. Building on that, despite what the devs intended, Edelgard is a villain. If a character is the villain in every route but their own, newsflash, they're a villain. Her route is the villain route. Devs intended for her to be a protagonist, but guess what? You are playing as a villain protagonist. They exist. They happen. Edelgard herself knows this. She knows her way of going about things. Causing a war after reading a manifesto is wrong. She just doesn't have time to do it another way. I'm not in the fandom myself, but I'm low-key obsessed with how the Dear Evan Hansen fandom just collectively pretends Connor never died. You know, the inciting incident for the entire musical. Yeah, around 99% of fanfictions are fixits. I was deeply in that fandom a few years ago. The other 1% is just, Connor freaking dies and Evan is just left there stumbling. How often the veterans just lie to the new fans. With how complex the lore is, the older players find it very funny to lie to newcomers, and it's difficult to confirm whether stuff is true or not due to how much lore there is and how many stories there have been. You can literally spend weeks reading the wiki and come out clueless. This is N stars, by the way. Not my fandom, but my favorite trope, Alpha Beta Omega. As a feminist who actively participates in fighting for equality for each and everyone, I kind of choose to ignore the fact that alphas are often superior and take control of omegas. Yeah, the ABO is not my thing because it so often uses gender stereotypes I'd just as soon avoid but pretends it's cool because it's technically two dudes. The Last of Us fandom. Half of us won't even watch the show because we know Joel will die in season two. We're just all in the Lulu land. I'm in the Miraculous Ladybug fandom. There are just so many, so many freaking elephants. I feel you. Possibly not about the same elephants, but it and the fandom are just a mess. I'm glad that I got out. After writing around 200 fanfictions over four AO3 accounts. Any fandom where the message is, be kind to each other. Big thank you to my Patreon members, my little Ruse. 
Kuski55, Fallen Vexen, Sam, Donka42, I Am a Noodle, John Huang, Fantastic Wreck, Laser Scorpio, Night Avenger, and Mintara. Thank you so much for your extra support on Patreon. It means the world to me. You guys are awesome. I'm so glad to have you here. Keep on being cool like you always are. And the same goes to my YouTube channel members, my mini ruse, AD, Taylor Thompson, Fox Star Killer, Logan, and D Bella. Thank you so much for your extra support. I'm so glad to have you be a part of my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Keep being great. And of course, thank you to everyone else who watched. Give me your answers to this question in the comments. I'd love to know. What is some glaring issue in your fandom that everyone turns a blind eye to? And are you part of that? Or do you think people should finally acknowledge it? Share your thoughts and experiences below. We can all have some good discussions about it. Have a great day. Again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.